this video is going to be a little bit different. Uh, there's not going to be much in the way of visuals. Feel free to turn off the visuals and just listen to the audio. So the new AM5 socket was announced by AMD at Computex in Taipei last week. Here's a rundown of everything you need to know about the new socket. The new AM5 motherboard and the new Ryzen CPUs that will be launching this year. Everything's been confirmed now. So this is a really big development for AMD. It's the first time that they're coming up with a new socket since the arrival of the AM4 socket, I think in 2016 or 2017 now. Now, firstly, when will the new socket actually launch? It'll be launching in fall or autumn of this year. AMD confirmed the rumors that it will support DDR5 memory only, something that has been speculated about for some time, and you'll know about that already if you watch this channel. Uh, in the keynote speech at the Computex event, Dr. Lisa Su held nothing back, demoing a triple A game on one of the new Ryzen 7000 desktop chips with a clock speed of up to 5500 megahertz. This smashes through the 4900 MHz boost speed of the Ryzen 9 5950X. We now know that that CPU was running at stock, not overclocked, and this was not being cooled by anything more than a middle of the road uh, liquid CPU cooler, a 140 millimeter CPU cooler. The new Ryzen 7000 series lineup runs on a five nanometer TSMC process, and we can expect up to 16 cores with the new design. Now this new design, the inside out design sees the micro pins, which have been an iconic feature of uh, Ryzen's desktop CPUs being replaced by an LGA design, land grid array, where the pins will be in the motherboard socket. This is the kind of design AMD already uses for its Epic processors. And it should, be among, it should, among other benefits, introduce superior signal quality. At least that's what AMD is claiming. I suspect they know full well, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the performance benefits of uh, LGA. There are three motherboard categories. There is a new X670E, and then there's the X670 and the B550. No, not the B550, the B650. Now, all of these can be overclocked, yay. The B650 will be at PCIe Gen 4 for graphics and will support the smoldering hot speeds of PCIe Gen 5 for NVMe storage. As we move up the line, all the way to the, uh, all the, way to the X670E, E is for extreme, we see more and more support for PCIe Gen 5. That's the thing that will distinguish these including possibly on the expansion slots as well as the storage. And I think this is uh, th this very complete support for PCIe Gen 5 is really ideal for those who want to, who are looking to build a new PC uh, that's going to last maybe several years, maybe four or five years, right from the outset of this new uh, socket. Now I'll have a bit more about the new Zen 4 architecture later on. Despite the change to LGA, we are still going to see support for existing coolers. But bear in mind that there is an increase in TDP from 65 watts and 105 watts in Ryzen 5000 to a TDP of up to 170 watts in Ryzen 7000. These bad boys are probably, the Ryzen 7000 are probably going to be drawing more power from the power supply. Now, there's been a little bit of talk about improved power management in the IO die, which we're going to talk about later on. But I think the CPU itself is going to be designed to be able to draw more power and get more performance, possibly not quite as much power as the 12th gen Intel CPUs. Now, as for the promised super fast storage, we've, we have seen some examples finally of fast storage at PCI Gen 5. Uh, and I think we're seeing speeds of about 13,000 megabytes, 14,000 thereabouts. That's the kind of speed we would expect if we doubled from PCIe Gen 4. So they seem to have got there, but the form factor seems to require bolt-on heat spreaders. Now the 
Zen 4 architecture, I suspect they'll be very expensive uh, initially as well. Now the Zen 4 architecture, the new architecture is something quite other. It doubles the amount of L2 cache per core and as well as the Zen 4 compute dies, 7000 will also feature a 6 nanometer IO die. And this is where we're going to find an RDNA 2 based graphics engine which idea AMD stole from their Ryzen mobile processors. The I.O. will support DDR5, PCI Gen 5, and can enable support for up to four displays, four monitors. But we haven't been given any data on the resolution and the refresh rates uh, for these. Uh, and we don't have any information on maximum bit depth either. The frequency of 55 100 megahertz we spoke about earlier is achievable on all cores, not just the fastest one. As for performance, a boost is seen of 15% versus prior generation and more than 30% against an Intel Core i9-12900K in Blender in a multi-threaded workload. Now there was a video from Hardware Unboxed where they said that they were getting a 20% increase against Intel in this generation in some of the tests that they ran. So that 30% probably is not quite as impressive as it might appear at first. However, there's been quite a bit of debate about whether that 30% is actually an accurate calculation or whether the actual improvement that AMD showed in their slides in the footnotes was closer to 50%. Um, I would go with the 50%. I, was, I think it was about 46% improvement over the Core i9-12900K, uh, but that's debatable. Now, whilst the Zen 4, I don't think it's debatable, but <laughs> AMD's numbers are 30%. Whilst Zen 4 CP, uh, CPUs now come with RDNA 2 based graphics and the IO die, there should still be some APUs with superior graphics, but we don't know whether these will share the same Zen 4 architecture. Support for AM4 is continuing with AMD trying to find a balance between the old and the new, uh, with the emphasis being for entry level and mainstream level at AM4 and high performance at AM5, at least initially. They hope this will both encourage new demand for DDR5 and therefore create or generate greater supply for DDR5 whilst still giving something for the tens of millions of users on AM4. And hopefully during this time, the DDR5 prices will gradually begin to moderate. Now, this had been an area of confusion as some outlets were suggesting that after the Ryzen 5800X3D, it was over for the AM4 socket, it was done. But AMD have not only said that they will continue support for AM4, but also that AM5 will have multi-year, multi-generation support. And I think this is really what many AMD fans wanted to hear. I think this is good for long-term planning and also good for the environment with the possibility of extensive reuse of components, motherboards and all of that sort of stuff. AMD basically did something very similar with the AM3 socket, AM3 Plus socket, when it began to give way to AM4. They continue to support AM3. I mean, they had supported it for many years and they continue to support it. I remember seeing in 2019, new CPUs for the AM3 Plus socket. Now I suspect you could probably find some, some AM3 Plus sockets, maybe not even used ones available even today. I haven't checked recently though. Now a bit more on the motherboards. The X670 Extreme, the X670E will bring the highest level of connectivity and extreme overclocking along with PCIe Gen 5 support for two graphics and one storage slot. X670 will bring enthusiast class overclocking capability along with PC, PCIe Gen 5 support for one storage slot and the optional uh, possibility of PCIe Gen 5 support for graphics. That will be determined by the motherboard manufacturer. The B B650, which is where I think many of the self-build market is going to be, will be for overclocking 
It's going to support overclocking with added PCIe Gen 5 support for storage. Notably, we heard little about single thread performance in comparison to Intel during the presentation. The emphasis, and even after the presentation, the emphasis on PCI Gen 5 is interesting as it suggests that AMD are predicting the possibility of actual use case scenarios where PCI Gen 5 might boost real world performance on graphics. Now, there's a lot of talk about direct storage, which is a new feature that Microsoft brought out in April or March, and the ability of AMD's new smart access storage to take advantage of direct storage. Now, this is the feature that will allow uh, GPUs to communicate directly with the NVMe drive. So they'll be able to take data directly from the NVMe drive. But that's something that I think that will need an AMD CPU uh, and an AMD graphics as well, a uh, modern AMD graphics card. So that's not something that they're building on top of direct storage, which direct storage itself is pretty interesting technology. But uh, that that I'm, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to uh, fit into the to the new motherboard situation. But I suspect we will hear more as time goes by. So that's going to be it for now. We will learn more as the launch date nears. But for the time being, enjoy your AM4. Uh, CPUs and keep ho keep holding on to those coolers for when uh, it comes time to upgrade to the new guys.